To some, Louisville, Kentucky is a thriving hub of commerce and enterprise. But Daryl Davis knows a different side of his city. I didn't see anything but poverty. I didn't see anything but crime. His father's mental disorders created chaos in their home. He was in and out psychiatric institutes quite often. He would be uh, delusional. The fear uh, that, had, that imparted into my life was something that I would carry for all of my life. The family's utilities were often cut off, and Daryl and his four siblings never knew if they would eat that day. Not knowing where the next meal would come from uh, was probably the most uh, difficult issue. When Daryl was a teenager, his parents divorced. In the court's eyes, I was old enough to choose who I was going to stay with. And indeed, I did. I stayed with my father, which was not a good thing. His father drank heavily and began prostituting women out of his home. When Daryl was just 15, his father threw him out on the street. I packed a few things I owned and got in my car and uh, found a parking garage in downtown Louisville and didn't know where I was going to sleep that night uh, other than that car. That car would be his home for the next several months. I remember unraveling a bag of chips and, and eating those and uh, thinking, I hope these last for a day or two. I remember the hurt and the fears, and I wasn't sure where I was going to turn to. Daryl wandered the streets, eventually landing a job as a dishwasher. Daryl's wages were just enough to pay for his food and his newly formed drug habit. I was uh, pretty heavy into drugs. Didn't know where I would acquire the next drugs that I was looking for. Daryl later married and moved in with his sister. He also found a new vocation. The best route to make money was to deal drugs, to pay not only for the drugs that I was doing, but also to make money over and above. One day, Daryl received an indictment on drug charges. He realized a friend had ratted him out. Armed with a knife, he went to the man's apartment. He was staying at a friend's barbershop, which had a little room in the back of the small apartment. I remember walking in the door and confronting him, and the heat of the argument escalated in a very short time. He grabbed the knife, and within a few seconds, we were in quite the fight, and we landed on the outside on the concrete. During the fight, Daryl says he blacked out. I had no idea how many times I had stabbed my victim. I knew when I stabbed him the last time that he was soon to be dead. He put his hand over his mouth. He whispered, oh God. Those words continued to echo in my mind as I left. Daryl was arrested and charged with murder. After he was released on bond, he went home and started getting high. But this time, it was different. I was sitting in a recliner listening to music with a joint going. I remember the presence of God just settling around me, something very foreign to me. I didn't even know exactly what was going on. All I know is that for the first time, I was able to feel remorse begin to work in my heart. I, I began to really contemplate what I had done. I thought about the crime and the, and the scene of it and all the horror that it entailed. I, I remembered every detail for the first time. I got on my face and, and that weeping turned to a convulsive cry and my high was gone. That night, Daryl asked Christ into his heart. Two years later, he went to trial and was given a life sentence. When he got to prison, it didn't take long for his newfound faith to be tested. When I got to the yard, uh, I saw a friend of mine that I grew up in the streets with. He came to me and he said, Daryl, he said, you're not going to believe this. He said, we run this yard. We've got people bringing in drugs. And as tempting as it was, I knew I had to say no. This was it. This was my crossroads. And I said, I can't do this. My life has radically changed. I've accepted the Lord in my life. His friend's response stunned him. And I said, well, that's good. That's really good, man. I had no problem with it at all. And he said, one thing I know about you, Daryl, is that if you said you were going to do something, you did it. And we believe you do this. I was <laughs> awestruck. I thought, this is incredible. This is God. Darrell led Bible studies in prison and took every opportunity to share Christ with his fellow inmates. He also earned an associate's degree. Despite his model behavior, Darrell was denied parole twice. The second time came at 18 years. I went back to the, my cell and I just poured my heart out to the Lord. I said, Lord, I don't understand this. I remember him speaking to me so well. There was a knowingness within that, you know, if I would just face one day at a time and put my feet on the floor 
the next morning. He'd meet me there with grace. Daryl was finally released in 2012 after serving 22 years. He moved back to Louisville and recently married Tiffany. He now leads a ministry for prisoners called Proclamation of the Word. Yeah, you know, I sit here today believing in a God that's sovereign. That was not only in the pro board's answers, but was in my deferments and my hardships and my adversities and, and the good times and, and every time of my life. I can't imagine one day without His love one day without His grace, His mercy. And every single day when I wake up, I feel that need. I sit here today oh, in total love with my Savior, my Creator, my God, Jesus Christ. He is my all in all.